What is going on everybody? My name is Nico and welcome back to another Pokemon BDSP video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys what I think is one of the most fun shiny hunting methods that I've done and that is the Poke Radar shiny hunting method. It's also very very good at getting shinies. It's just a super fun method all around so I'm going to be showing you guys exactly what you need to do in order to effectively get your own shinies in Pokemon BDSP. If this is your first time here on the channel make sure you are subscribed for more videos like this in the future. Let's get into it. So first things first, this has to be done after you beat the game. You have to have already beaten the game, beaten Cynthia, and you also must have your national decks in order to do this because you do not get your Poke Radar until you are given the national decks. You literally get them right at the same time. So it's important to have all of these steps done prior to doing this method. Aside from this, the very first thing you want to do in order to effectively do this is you want to head to Romanov's Park. And this is also done in the post game. You want to go there by heading south of Sandgem Town and then surfing over where you'll meet Professor Oak, who will give you the chain app for your Poketch. And this will show you the amount of chains that you have or the number of Pokemon that you have in your chain, which is very crucial to to poke radar shiny hunting now i definitely think this is one of the more expensive ways of shiny hunting because you're going to want to stock up on max repel and quick balls and other pokeballs are going to be very useful because you are going to be trying to catch the same pokemon over and over and over and over in order to get your chain up and another thing i would recommend because of this is to turn off the auto name feature you want to just turn that off so that way it doesn't ask you if you want to nickname every pokemon you catch and also turn on auto send to pc box so that way you don't have to take the extra time to answer those questions and save yourself a little bit of time through these hunts because it just it's a quality of life thing you don't have to turn it off it's just something i highly recommend doing now like i said i think this is one of the most fun shiny hunting methods that i have done before you know i i started shiny hunting in sword and shield i you know masuda method there was the random encounter method in sword and shield there was the uh max raid dens that you were able to do there's a bunch of different ways in pokemon sword and shield in order to get shiny pokemon and I just think this one's super kind of, it's kind of relaxing almost in just the way you do it. And the odds are so good. So normal odds in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are one out of 4,096. Those are your odds for getting a random shiny encounter in the game. However, the odds are increased significantly by doing the Poker Radar method. It's it's fantastic how quick you can get shinies doing this method. Now, one thing to note is that you can 100% fail this without doing a single step wrong in doing the poker radar method you can fail this with doing everything right and that can be frustrating to some however personally i think it's kind of nice and i know that might be a hot take but if this was super easy every time you'd be able to get shinies like that and it wouldn't be as satisfying like the fun of shiny hunts is getting the pokemon at the end of a long hunt or like really working for something obviously you know the insta shinies are fun but like if you've had a long hunt it's so much more rewarding versus being able to get shiny pokemon like this they would have no real value you know that's what makes shiny pokemon special so i kind of like the fact that you can fail but it is worth bringing up here you're going to be failing this pretty frequently so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be going to a large patch of grass wherever the pokemon you want to shiny hunt is located and you're going to want to turn on your poke radar now i would recommend registering this and deregistering anything else so that way you can just press start and it automatically uses the poker radar super easy to do and i think this is the best method you don't have to deregister everything else if you find it annoying having to go back in and re-register things like your bike the verse seeker whatever it may be but that's something i would do then you're also going to want to turn on your max repels make sure you just have those going at all times it's just going to make your life that much easier then when you finally find whatever pokemon it is you want to start a chain on you need to note that catching is the better option you can knock out these pokemon and have a chance to continue your chain however it's it's just not quite as good as if you catch every single pokemon that you encounter of the same type so for example, I was doing Starly. I was on the first route trying to get a chain on Starly started. So I would activate my Poker Radar, make sure I had my Max Repel going, and then I would go into the different grass areas. Once I found a Starly, I would catch that first Starly. The reason you catch it is because when you catch the Pokemon, you have a 93% chance that you're going to continue your chain. 
versus if you knock that Pokemon out, you only have an 83% chance of continuing your chain. And it's just better to have those increased odds of continuing the chain because you want to be able to get the shiny as quickly as possible. So I would recommend catching. You can knock out. It's just, I don't know why you would. So after you catch the first Pokemon, as long as your chain continues, there is going to be more grass rustling. Now, before you just go running into the nearest piece of grass that is rustling, you want to be aware of this information. Whatever grass tile you go into next that is rustling, you need to have it at least four tiles away from you in order to actually continue the chain. So what's super important with this is just pick the one that's farthest away from you that is usually your safest bet in order to continue the chain most effectively without actually having to count the tiles obviously if they look super close count the tiles because what you can do is instead of running into the grass and potentially breaking chain you just run out of the grass you go back and forth because it takes a hundred steps or so to charge up your poker radar and then you activate it again and new grass pieces will be rustling again find one that's four tiles away from you pick the farthest one away from you go into it and continue you your chain now like i said if you successfully keep the chain going you're going to be able to see this and you're going to see more grass rustling however if you get out of catching a pokemon and there's no grass rustling that just means your chain was broken like i said if you catch a pokemon there's only 93 percent chance that this chain is going to continue so you need to be aware of that that there is just a random chance that you're going to fail a seven percent chance that you're not going to continue the chain so it's just something to keep in mind it can be frustrating at times like for my starly it took probably 10 to 11 chains in order for me to finally get the shiny starly but with persistence this method is fantastic for getting shiny pokemon it really doesn't take that much time at all in the last 24 hours i've gotten three shiny pokemon so it's super easy to do this way there it is oh baby there it is there it is we got it hold on i need my camera where's my camera oh there it is there it is we got it shiny beedoof people now the trick is the chain obviously you want to keep your chain going and as you get more and more pokemon in your chain you're going to be getting an increase in the odds of encountering a shiny i don't want to break down each specific level because it does vary at each level what your odds are the best is getting to chain 40 Chain 40 gives you a 1 in 99 chance of encountering a shiny Pokemon. The odds are slightly elevated if you have a shiny charm, but without a shiny charm, because shiny charm is kind of difficult to get in this game, you're going to have a 1 in 99 chance of getting a shiny Pokemon. And that is super nice. You'll even see the grass shiny. It, it, it sparkles. You'll be able to see it on screen, which is just fantastic. You'll be able to know exactly when you get that shiny Pokemon. And you can get it before you get to the 40 chain. It's just easiest at the 40 chain. So what you can do at the 40 chain because if you just keep encountering the grass rustling you're going to break the chain potentially there's still that seven percent chance that you break that chain so what i recommend doing is if you manage to get up to a 40 chain which is only a five percent chance if you get up to a 40 chain which i've done twice now what you can do is if you don't see the grass shining simply walk out of the grass reset your poker radar walk back into a grass tile and activate the poker radar and keep doing this until the grass shines this also works after you've caught the shiny pokemon and your chain continues so if you catch a shiny pokemon by going in and your chain goes up to 41 do the same thing again hop out of the grass run back and forth activate your poker radar and then you have another opportunity to get shinies my buddy did this for seven different times after hitting a chain 40 and getting his first shiny pokemon he got seven shiny rolls by simply increasing the chain by catching the shiny pokemon backing out of the grass and keep running back and forth and reactivating the poker radar until grass kept shining and as long as your chain keeps going you can keep doing this method to get as many of these shinies as you want it is a fantastic shiny hunting method some other quick things to note don't leave the route while you're doing this you'll break your chain while you're doing that don't turn the game off. If you turn your game off, you won't be able to continue. Your chain will break if you turn your game off, but you can just sit there. As long as you sit there and you see the grass rustling on screen, you are able to take a break, walk away. The grass will just continue rustling. There's no reason that you have to rush through this. As long as your switch doesn't automatically turn itself off and put itself into sleep mode, you're going to be able to continue doing this no problem. So again, this is just a fantastic method it really works super well it's super fun to do 
it's it's just kind of relaxing to go after grass after grass you know follow the rustling brush it's it's fun it's very fun and the odds are very good and it feels super satisfying to hit that 40 chain and know that at that point you're guaranteed a shiny if you do be very careful you know get away from the other rustling brush and just keep reactivating your poker radar it's a very satisfying feeling however like i said i just want to reiterate this you can screw this up you can and it's not your fault at all it's just random numbers and at that point you just got to kind of take the blows as they come and just keep on trucking because Ultimately, you're going to end up getting a shiny pretty quickly with this method. So that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions in particular regarding the shiny hunting method, make sure you leave a comment below for me. I try to answer all the comments that I get in regards to this. But that is all I have. If you found the video entertaining and helpful, make sure you leave a like and smash the subscribe button for more videos like this in the future. I plan on covering future shiny hunting methods such as Masuda method and the underground method in this particular game. If there's chain fishing, I'm sure I'll do a chain fishing video as well. So more Pokemon BDSP stuff coming very soon. But like I said, that's it for this one and I hope to see you all in the next video.